Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and we are in October. It's already the 5th, but here in San Antonio, it's going to be 90 degrees today, so it's that time of year where we got just a little taste of autumn, and then, yeah, we're back into kind of early summer temperatures, but that's just the way it rolls here in Texas. And um, so I'm really happy to be looking towards the holidays with my stamping right now. Kind of keeps my mind off the heat. Although I will say, even though our temperatures are still pretty high during the day, we're getting nice cool temperatures at night and the humidity's way down. So it's starting to feel a little bit like fall. Hello, hello there, Melissa and Cynthia, welcome. Thank you for joining me. And yeah, even though um, the temperatures aren't feeling too terribly much like autumn, you know, the nights are starting to draw in, it's getting darker earlier, and we can feel it, it's coming. So lots, uh, lots of fun things coming up. This is really my favorite time of year, not only with regard to temperature and things like that, but it is. It's, we have Halloween coming up, then we have Thanksgiving coming up, and then we have Christmas coming up. So three months in a row of mega holiday celebrations and so much fun with decor and things like that. Hey, Diana, I'm glad you're here. Um, I remember when my kids were younger and there was so much to do with celebrating and everything. And now that I'm an empty nester, it's, you know, the celebrations are a little bit different, but we can still, you know, whether you have little ones around you, whether they're near or far, um, we can still celebrate and bring the seasons into our space. So I'm going to go ahead and bring camera down. We've got a lot to talk about today. It is Teach Me Tuesday, weekly Teach Me Tuesday, and I'm so glad you're here. Okay, close your eyes for just a minute while I bring the camera down. Okay, you can see that what I'm going to talk about first is I've just, like, just released my uh, October Cards with a Twist class. So this is my monthly uh, class by mail and it is ready to roll. It's actually been ready. I just needed to get everything loaded. Um, I had everything designed and ready, thought I was ahead of the game, but you know, there's all the bits and pieces. So, hey, Simone, I'm glad you're here. And yeah, you have the same situation I do where you live in a warm climate and um, so we have to bring fall in with other means. Hey, Susan, I'm glad you're here with me. Well, I forgot to change my lighting this time. Oh, well, we will just have to go with it the way it is. And I've been kind of playing with my new alt light and then, uh, but I have to move it back and forth. So anyway, okay, I'll quit jabbering and show you Cards with a Twist. So Cards with a Twist each month is my class by mail and we center around one stamp set. And you know, I'm, I can't resist the birds, so I went with Happy Holidays. And I typically, with Cards of the Twist, I will do one class that is, um, that is Christmas. Um, so this one, I will say, you can go beyond Christmas um, with the greetings as well as with the, with the bird in particular. So lots of fun things with, this is the one uh, stamp set that we are using. Let me show you the designs and what you get. So cards with a twist, if you are new to this class, you get uh, two each of four designs for a total of eight cards and envelopes, but there's a twist on each set. So here is my first two, and you can see that my twist is, you know, kind of your colors, and as well as your um, designer series paper. So this is a fancy fold. I typically have one fancy fold card in my lineup for cards with a twist. Here is card number two, and this one features the border punch, and that's what I'm gonna be um, teaching today is how to use the border punch. And yes, I love this paper too. This is the paper that I teamed up with the um, Whimsy and Wonder Designer Series paper for this really soft palette. This card here, I've used the velvet, the white velvet paper. It has a really nice feel and look to it, a really good contrast with the shine of the snowflake so that you get some uh, matte and some shine. I do like contrast. Um, here is actually the same card, 
two ways. All I did here was I just flipped the paper over. And then when I did that, I needed to change the, um, the color of the greeting as well. And you can see that I've also paired this with this beautiful velvet ribbon that's actually in the annual catalog, and I think it's been overlooked. So this is the last one, and this is with our polished pink. Is, isn't that a beautiful pink for the holidays? So these are the designs for cards with a twist. You've got, you know, insides on everything, and um, I mainly use the holly leaf on the inside. So let me show you what you get. You get, um, I think it's a half a roll of this gorgeous, gorgeous. Now this is thick because it's a velvet ribbon. So you can see I've used it kind of as a layer behind things. It would be difficult to tie ribbons and knots and things with this because it's so thick. Uh, Simone, thank you so much for sharing this. That really helps me. Then you're also going to get a package of these pastel pearls. And these are both annual catalog items, but they pair beautifully with this holiday catalog paper. Now, I only used two colors of ink throughout my designs, and uh, there is an option to add those if you so wish. And my two colors are Mossy Meadow and Mint Macaron pulled directly out of the colors in the designer series paper. Hi, Valerie, I'm glad you're here. The other things you can add on, if you wish, is you can add on the stamp set or you can add on the bundle. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this uh, border punch today, and I think that you really ought to consider adding it to your class. Or if you're a demonstrator and you're watching, that you might want to add this bundle to your next order. So, you know, as a demonstrator, we get 20% off at least all of our orders. Once we um, get to a certain level with our, um, just the orders that we've placed, we can start qualifying for 25% off. So I haven't paid full price for stamps since I became a demonstrator, which is really makes me happy. So being a demonstrator doesn't mean that you have to run classes or anything like that. You can just be a discount shopper. And I'd love to talk to you about that if you would, if you're interested. Hey, Corinne, thank you so much for being here and also for sharing. So I don't know if it's going to come out very well in the, um, you know, with all the lighting here, but this is gorgeous, gorgeous designer series paper. Most of it has kind of a rose gold. So this is not a silver and it's not a gold. It's, it's a very pinky rose gold. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I will get you that ribbon. Hang on one second, uh, Simone. This piece here is the hardest to, um, to photograph because it's almost like a holographic. I mean, it's so shiny, it's gorgeous. The back sides of these papers are equally beautiful and they just pair so nicely. See, these right here, you could just use for birthday or something. So I do like the versatility. I, I probably didn't tell you, you get a half a pack of this paper with the class. This is probably my favorite image, the really soft holly leaves. And then look at that bright pink on the back. I mean, look at those together. Va, va, voom on the colors. Now look at this too. This is also with these gift packages. Again, you could use a lot of these for just winter birthdays. They do have holly leaves on many of them. Super easy to fussy cut because they're just, you know, they're just rectangles. And then the other side is another one of my favorites. I love holly leaves, but look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm going to turn this over so it doesn't keep glaring in the in the um in the lighting let's see what else have i got here this this is really pretty aren't those just very feminine oh these such beautiful um christmas ornaments and then the other side has that real kind of almost smoky misty moonlight really subtle with the christmas trees this would make great scrapbooking paper as well and look how would you pair that you see how it calms this down I love, love, love the way our Stampin' Up! artists just mix and match colors in ways that many of us just would not think to do. And then this piece here is so lovely. Isn't that just gorgeous? And again, it has that kind of rose gold. So it's not a true silver. It's not a true gold. It's just gorgeous. And then the other side, again, this you could use for birthdays. You could use for anything, really. 
um, very all occasion, very subtle, um, and that is mint macaron. So this is the Whimsy and Wonder Designer Series paper, and that is what you get a half a pack of with your class. Now, Simone was asking about this ribbon. This is a beautiful ribbon to go with this. It's very luxurious. It's a true velvet, and um, it is item number 155814, and I believe you get five, I think this is five yards, Mm, yes, five yards. So if I recall, I think that on my class, when I priced it out, I think you get a half a roll of this. So honestly, you know, you're going to use this in small amounts. You don't need huge amounts of this ribbon to effectively do some fun crafting. So that is Cards with a Twist released today. Um, I haven't even figured out what day I'm going to close registration, but I, um, I'm aiming to... Um, Mail out packets on the 22nd, so probably about a week before that is when registration will close. Okay, I am going to use the same stamp set because I'm going to use this fun border punch, and I'm going to use a totally different set of Designer Series paper to get a different look and to hopefully teach you how to use a border punch. So I thought we would just change it up and use some totally different designer series paper. Not going soft, but we're going more um, kind of rich. So this is kind of what I've gathered here. Lots of different greens. I'm gonna do a little bit of teaching about greens as well. And I'm going to use, I think I closed it up already. You know what, let me put this in my little bag here so I don't, I'll end up getting these Putting ink on these if I don't just take a moment to put them away and get them into some into a cello bag so that they are safe from all of the ink that goes flying in this studio. Hope you guys had some fun this weekend. It was officially World Card Making Day on Saturday, and I did something here live on Friday night, I did a free class, so if you haven't watched that, be sure to catch that. Um, and then um, I did an in-person class on Saturday for World Card Making Day, and it was just brilliant. It was a day to really just celebrate what we do with our cards. Okay, so this is the one I was showing you, and this is the one I'm going to use now, and it is Sweet Stockings. And one of the reasons I wanted to use this is, for one thing, I wanted to use greens, and this has a couple of excellent greens, and it has um, Old Olive and Evening Evergreen. But I also wanted to show you how, if you don't have this, um, this bundle, but you love the paper, you can use the paper and use other stamps with it. So that was kind of um, what I was thinking here. So you were, Valerie, you were making tags for World Card Making Day. Good for you. That is really what we love doing, is making pretty things with paper. So I have pulled, let's see, I pulled one, two, three patterns out of the designer series paper to play with. And I think I'm gonna use this side. Yeah, because there's, I need the greens. And I think I'm gonna use, I could use either one here. I have a Welsh Corgi. I'm a Welsh Corgi mama, so this would be hard to not use. And then this one with the stockings, because yeah, that just doesn't look too Christmassy to me. I think that's a great Halloween paper. I don't know how it got into a Christmas stack, but you know. Okay, so when you look at a border punch, these are designed to you know punch however long of a strip you want to do. Now, although when you measure this from end to end here, it's one and a quarter, I found that if you use a one and an eighth or even one, uh, I'm sorry, not one, one and a quarter or even one and three eighths, you get a better fit because you end up, uh, you don't want too big of a border on one side or like a, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't want too, well, you want it to be centered. So when you're using this kind of a border punch, you want to flip it over first and line up to make sure that your paper, you see that, how you wanna make sure that your paper is covered up by the punch itself. 
And then I like to just flip it over because I think like a lot of us, I have a lot of weakness in my hands. And um, it's just too cumbersome to hold this up and punch it. Anytime you see a punch that has a lot of blades like this, it's gonna, you're gonna have to use a lot of heft when you punch it. So it's designed where you can just set it down on your work surface and use gravity and use your, um, your own body weight to push. And now I have that cute punch. Now I can keep going by feeding this through. Let me just bring this down a little bit. I'm gonna feed this through and I'm gonna take, I can peek up here and see that I wanna start at the bottom of this second set of holly leaves. So I'm gonna just line up the holly leaves that have already been punched out with the silver ones here and then punch again. And you may have to use both hands. And then I'm going to keep going. So I want to go back underneath because that's the last one I did. That has to be inside the machine or I'll have too big of a, there it is. Not inside the machine, but just hanging on the edge. So that one there, I need to bring right to the edge and I want to line it up with the silver foil. Let's see if I'm in the camera right. I hope I am. And then punch again. And look at there. To me, this is like perfect confetti. This would also make a great shaker card. So you can pull a few of these if you want to use on your card. But for the most part, I'm saving some for shaker cards, and then I'm just kind of tossing the rest. I know that might sound uh, sacrilegious to some, but yeah, it's super cute. When I need some, I'll make some. And then I have this nice border, and I can do all kinds of fun things with it. Now, this is Granny Apple Green, and I wanted to show you a little bit about greens because the two greens that are in my designer series paper are Evening Evergreen and Old Olive, and those look really good together. I like them a lot. However, um, Pear Pizzazz is actually the lighter counterpart to Old Olive. So these are like a dynamic duo, is what Stampin' Up! used to call these. So I could even bring this in, and it gives a lot higher contrast to these two. And then, if I really wanted to get bold, I could add in some Granny Apple Green. And Granny Apple Green is like the brighter counterpart to Old Olive, so it really brightens things up. And I think sometimes we'll keep it from getting too dull. So what I like to do when I'm using a border punch like this, this would make a great piece for a scrapbook. And of course you could go the full 12 inches if you wanted. You can do all kinds of things with this, but I like to just go ahead and cut a length and then figure out how big I want it to be based on my card. So you see there, I can decide how I wanna cut it rather than pre-cutting and then uh, having to deal with, you know, measuring it up. So Corinne, you never throw away those pieces. Well, you would have some great material for shaker cards or for confetti when people open your cards. So let's see, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a couple of panels because I felt that if we wanted to add a little bit of, um, if we wanted to add a little bit of ribbon, then we would have the, the opportunity to do that. I also was just pulling this out of my scrap bin and this didn't get, this was an extra piece from a class. And this is using one of the wintry uh, embossing folders. So I thought, well, let's just see if this is about the right width here. You know, let me trim it down a little bit. I need that to be one and a quarter. So let me get my trusty ruler here. And let's see what we can come up with to make this the right 
edge. Oh yeah, see this is at like one and three quarters, almost two. So let me pull this in here and I want it to be right about there and one and a quarter. So I'm mixing myself up now. How much do I need to cut off? This is one and three quarters and I need one and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut off a half inch, okay? Let's see, probably should have just used my trimmer. Should have just pulled out my trimmer. But I think that is going to work. So let's just play with this and see what we come up with. Now, again, I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna make sure that this is positioned correctly. So I want that to be like so. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna start punching. Haha, probably got a little bit too close to the edge there. But I'm just kind of playing right now. And one of the things we have to remember is sometimes we need to develop a pattern and then go from there. So that actually looks pretty cool. Now, see, I brought this down where it needs to be trimmed a little bit. Trim that. And then, let's See what happens if we put that on a piece. Look at there. Isn't that cute? So now I could put that little panel right on top of a piece of Granny Apple Green, and then I have this texture, and then I have this border. So lots of cool things you can do with this. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more because I want it to be kind of even over here. Uh, got, well, I, would, I would do a little bit of pre-measuring so that I got a little better. <laughs> I end up chopping up so much of this. That's actually pretty cute, though. So, uh, because I want to have like a, a nice edge here and here. Okay, let's see what we can do. Let's swipe some of this away. Again, we are using the one and a quarter inch width, and that is kind of our magic number. Let's do away with that piece, and let's start with the Granny Apple Green, because that's kind of our out of the box color here. So let's go ahead and bring a um, bring a bone folder in here. Have y'all used the border punches before? We used to have quite a few, and then we didn't have any for a while, and now we have several again. So I, that tells me that they're making a bit of a comeback. Now I don't have the color I was wanting. Ah, let's see. Let's go with this here, and then, ooh, ooh, yeah, I might be able to do something like that, and then bring in, I was thinking, this piece here. Hmm. We could do something like that. Um, you want the trees. I don't remember there being any trees in here, Susan. This might look cute. You're talking about the trees from the other paper, probably. Hey, Jill, I'm glad you're here. Um, so that might be kind of cute. And then we've got, um, we've got texture, we've got punch, we've got designer paper, kind of a little bit of everything. And I think part of my issue here is, yeah, I need a small pattern over here if I'm gonna work with this. Um, but I kind of like that. What do you guys think? Now I could bring in, I got several, let's see. I got several ribbons over here. Let's see. What can I find here? Where did I put my ribbons? Hmm. I gathered up like three different green ribbons. Okay, so you like the stripes. I thought they might look cute too. Let's see. The 
stripes. And then we have a lot, we have like three different, actually four different greens, which is really a nice, kind of a nice look with all those contrasts. And then what we could do, I mean, we are really and truly just stamping on the fly here, designing on the fly and just experimenting. You know, sometimes you just need to get your things out and play with them a little bit. You see, I'm thinking this ribbon might look really nice right about there. Ooh, that looks pretty good too. We could even do we could even do two lines of ribbon, which I think might look kind of neat. So let's kind of experiment with that. And yes, ribbon scissors here. Okay, so two votes for the stripes. And honestly, this was just a you know this was just a piece in my scrap bin that I wasn't planning to use today, but we kind of trimmed it and trimmed it to where it just kind of got about where we didn't want it. But I will say I don't want to waste quite that much. So I think what I'm going to do is put this down and then come back to um, that other piece because I think I want to. Um, I think I want to trim it a little bit so that I don't, I think I've got about two inches there that I could use. Now with this border punch, what I found is if you will just kind of leave a little tiny bit of glue right along that edge so that I know it's going to stick and not be flying off my page. And this is where um, your five and a quarter by four inch panel really comes in handy because this is going to allow me to do some things here and then pop this whole thing up on dimensionals. Oopsie, I wanted to put that down. This is the other nice thing about using the green glue, the liquid glue, is I can still pop that underneath, although I can probably just put it on top and then run some ribbon over it. So let's just do it that way. Look how cute. Oh my gosh, I could even do that. But I'm, we're gonna stick with the, we're gonna stick with the stripes because they do look, I will not be a sucker for the dog and the cat. I will go with the stripes. We will go with a really nice traditional stripe. You know, sometimes you just start playing with something and you come out with something that you never would have expected but you really like. Sometimes you come in to do your your projects and you're all like, okay, this is what I need to get done today. I need this many birthday cards or I need this many, if you're a, a demonstrator like I am, it's like, okay, I need this many designs for a class. And other times you just kind of play with what you have. That can be some of the best time in your studio. Actually, truth be told, I like it all. I love what I do. I love the fact that, um, at this late stage in life as a senior, I'm getting to do the whole career thing. I was a stay-at-home homeschooling mom for all my kids' upbringing, and um, so I never did the career thing. I was busy sorting out kids for 20-odd years, and now that they're all grown and they have their families and on their own, I get to do the whole career thing. So, and... One of my, well, yeah, one of my kids is also homeschooling. I used to tell them when they were young, I'd say, you know, you guys can do whatever you want to do when your kids, you know, when you grow up and you have kids, but this is what, you know, your dad and I feel to do every year. I would tell them, you know, I'd be happy to send you to school. This is a lot of work for me. And every year they'd say, oh, mom, please, please. We want to keep homeschooling. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> here we are. Now I could go tone on tone there or... Let's see what happens if we pop that in to, let's see what it looks like with this uh, Evening Evergreen card base. Where did, here's the phone folder. See how these greens, and I see Granny Apple Green is not in the designer series paper that we're using, but Old Olive is. And Granny Apple Green is like the bright version of Old Olive. Mm. 
which one do we like? Do we like more, do we like the outline of the evening evergreen or do we out like the outline of the pulling this in? Or, well, we're gonna be spoiled for choice today because I brought out three card bases to work with and this is gonna pick up the green that's in the stripes. They're all nice. Okay, Simone likes the evening evergreen. And Melissa likes both. Okay, I have two, I have two votes for evening evergreen. So let's go with evening evergreen. And I think I'm gonna put the stripes over here and the holly over here because I'm gonna put a greeting down. And I think we're just gonna go super, super simple with the greeting. And I have pulled out, let's see. I pulled out my favorite greeting. Well, there's two favorites. The Noel is a bit large. That would probably work. But I pulled out this Christmas blessing to you and yours. I love that. And I think it's gonna be really pretty right there. I actually meant to do this the opposite way. Can I pull it? Yeah, it's still pretty, it's still pretty soft. You know, our, um, our new seal, I love it. Because once it dries, it's really, really secure. But until it dries, it's kind of a soft glue. It's kind of like a, uh, a drier form of our liquid glue. See, I want to do it like so. So now we got to figure out what kind. Oh, that, uh, oh so everybody was liking the, the last one. People were liking the, uh, the old olive because that was the last one that I added in. Well, let me see. Let's just see if I can pull it one more time because we'll do another one on the, um, we'll do another one on the evening evergreen. Ha, there we go. And this kind of picks up, yeah, this picks up the stripe. Okay. Makes it a little bit softer and I think actually makes the evening evergreen stand out a little bit more. So now I just need to put a little tag across here. And should we do red or should we do white? Let's see. What shall we do? Or we could do a little crumb cake. So let's see, we could do something like that. Um, we could do vanilla, let's see. This is what white looks like. That really gives us a bold contrast. There is um, our crumb cake. And let's see what else I can find. Let's find the little vanilla here. So we could go vanilla. I like that. I like that a lot because it's softer than the white, but a little brighter than the crumb cake. We could go red. I think it's a little bit much. So let's, I'm going to go with this. And I think I need about, let's see, this. I think I need about half, about three quarters of an inch. Yeah, you like the vanilla too? So let's go with about three quarters of an inch. We might bring it down a little bit more, but let's start with three quarters of an inch. And this, this is gonna be a really simple um, greeting because we've done a lot of razzmatazz with our, um, our background. And your eye can only follow so many things. So you don't wanna give too many things uh, to to bring to uh, draw your eye to your eye needs to land somewhere so let's go Christmas blessings to you and yours and I'm using the evening evergreen I could honestly use any of the greens in here I've used quite a few and let's use the trusty 
flag punch, actually called the tailored tag. And I think that's gonna be really, really nice. A couple more things I need to do here. For one, this ribbon is kind of sitting up a little bit. And so I'm gonna bring in just a little bit of a, um, let me bring in a little bit of a mini glue dot to make it hold. And I probably will only need to do it with this one over here because I think the other one will automatically stay. There we go. That way it's not kind of flying up. Okay, so this is going to go like so. Super, super simple. You like the red if I put the red berries in. Well, you know what? I think I might put some red, um, I think I might put some red rhinestones on here as a little bit of shine and glimmer and fun. Um, the other thing I could do, well, no, we've already got ribbon here, so I don't really want to add more ribbon. Um, okay, I need dimensionals. You guys are coming up with some great ideas today. I like designing with you, and I do like the way this is coming out. I think it's kind of a fun look here and here. So let's just do one more there. And... Boom. Maybe we'll do like so. And then let's just grab some red rhinestones. And I think we're just going to scatter them. These are, are these really warm colors, just really warm. And I don't know if you can see from there, but there is a lot of texture here. And then we've got a little shimmer and shine and the ribbon, and then this has produced a lot of texture as well. So yes, a little red bling. Let's see if I have, oh, this is going to be just the ticket. So this is going to help me. Now I could put a few over here, but I think I'm just going to scatter them and not try to match them up with the, um, what do we think? Is that enough or do I need more? I think I probably need more. Because <laughs> they're really small. What do we think? Maybe a few more? I, I get you guys. More bling is better. I think it turned out pretty cute. The whole goal with this was to teach you how to use the um, Holly Border Punch. And I think we did pretty good. We're gonna do one more and we're gonna do it a little bit different. Kind of my original thought before I went totally off grid with this. And that is that we are going to do a, um, evening evergreen base and maybe this or maybe this we could go with either one of these and then let's do I think I already have one trimmed yeah here's my little piece that's already done oh look how cute I love it already and we haven't even stuck it down yet um, a trio of berries. Okay, so maybe I should put a little three, another little three on here. Is that what you guys are saying? I'm already moving forward. Let's see. Maybe we can do one little trio over here so that it'll look like we've got um, one. I'm not sure if I've got the interpretation of what Jill's saying. But I think that is really cute. Maybe I should just move these. Oh, um, I'm just gonna, no, I'm gonna end up messing up. Okay, leave it alone, Candy. Leave it alone. Pretty cute. Pretty cute. I probably should have just done three, three, and three and been, been done with it. But I, I think I like it. So we'll see. We may come back and 
move these. I think if I move these, I need to like lift the, let's see, one, two, let's just use the put, the little spatula end, not the putty end. Oh, that's, so, you know what's cool about this is the colors are just so rich. You get that really high contrast over there. And then we need one more. Where did they go? Where did you put them, Candy? Oh, they're right in front of me. What do we think? Now that, says Holly. Good call, Jill. Okay, hopefully I am convincing you that you need to get the Holly Border Punch and you're learning how to use it in the process. Super fun, I love this. Okay, so now we are going to do another one, and this time we are going to, well, I wanted a border. Let's see, I like that. And I don't think, this doesn't give me enough contrast. Let's see if I can put this underneath. That's a soft contrast. I don't think it's gonna be enough. Nope, I need a piece of evening evergreen. Bear with me, please. I need to get a new piece out. Evening evergreen is where we're going. ideas and that is the fun of working together so what I'm gonna do is I have a five and a quarter by four panel and I actually was gonna do like this but maybe I need to bring this down a little bit let's bring this down just a wee bit to three and a three quarters so we have that little I want to have that little bit of border um, so I'm gonna pull three and three quarters there three and three quarters there I wanted a little bit of border around it. See, it needs that little frame. So let's go ahead and put that part down. I'm pretty confident that that is going to be what I'm looking for. There's my little silicone mat that always gets me rolling again. I am a heavy-handed crafter, so I tend to push pretty hard. And then my seal wants to stop on me, so I have to kind of help it a little bit. Look at there, isn't that cute? I'm not even gonna use any ribbon on this one. I think I'm just gonna butt it right up there. Yeah, Corinne, you like that better than the scattered. I agree, I usually like the scattered look, but I think that for one thing, those, um, those rhinestones are really small, and um, they needed to have a little bit more direction to them. Okay. So we're cutting this at three and three quarters, and look how cute. Look at how cute that is. I love it, and it's gonna go right up there. Now, I will say, yeah, let me just bring it right over there. I'm gonna overlap it ever so slightly so that I have the same width here as over here. Now again, what I'm gonna do is, well, you guys tell me, this is the holly leaves going down and this is the holly leaves going up. Just a small detail, but I think I like them going up better. So let's turn that over, and let's put just a wee bit of, you know what I actually found on here? Um, I used my fine tip glue pen. If you guys don't have this, um, this is the best for adhering um, sequins. It's very fine. The, um, the thing you have to be mindful of, kind of like with the green glue, is you want to use it sparingly. You don't want to squeeze too hard because although it will dry clear, it will dry shiny, and you don't want all that shiny glue showing out from your finished project. So that is the fine tip glue pen. And because this is such so narrow, I do find that it is the best fit for this. And look at there, quick, easy, fun. 
I like it. Now, let's pop this up on dimensionals. Yeah, going up is better, isn't it? So let's put this on dimensionals, and that is going to give us a little bit of lift there. Let's see if I got this straight. Sometimes you look at it a little bit, you pull it around to a different direction, you realize you're crooked. Okay, I'm ready for some dimensionals, which are somewhere here. Let's see, where did I put them? Donde esta? Here we go. And actually, what I'm going to use, this is when you really, when you're using really dark colors like this, this is when you want to pull in your black dimensionals. This is what they're really for. When you're crafting, not just with black, but with really dark colors, these dark, uh, these black dimensionals are definitely the way to go. And that is designed so that when you go to open your card and you don't want to have little tiny bits of white peeking out as you open your card. It's a small detail, but um, definitely not a, a beginner thing. But once you start crafting a little bit, you want to have some of those little extra things that will make a, whoopsie, that did not stick. Okay, I obviously need more <laughs> glue. I went too sparing. I was too sparing with my fine tip glue pen. So let's come back and not be quite so hesitant. Okay, there we go. Because this actually, truth be told, this is super strong. This is like great for, you can hold boxes together with this stuff. It's really, really strong. Like our green glue, it is liquid and therefore it does need to dry uh, before you start strong arming it, which may be part of what happened here. But I think more than anything was that I just used too little. Um, I was a little bit too um, careful with it in my efforts to not have too much. I went a little bit overboard. Okay, so now, and plus I, it was down and then I pulled it up. That didn't help either. It was actually really good and then I, okay. So there we go. Now I'm ready for Christmas blessings to you and yours. Now again, I can go with this. You know, maybe I'm gonna use that yellow. I could go with this. I don't wanna cover up all those stockings. Let's see if maybe I'm gonna use something a little bit smaller. I could go with the Happy Christmas is much smaller. Or even sharing the promise of the season. I really like that because it's just that little, little something. Maybe I'm gonna do that. Let's see. Sharing the promise of the season. I could go like that or I could go with Happy Christmas. Let's see, what do we want to do? Or I could even go with something totally different, but that's pretty cute. That's pretty cute, I like it. The white tag, okay. So we could go with white. I think it won't show up a lot. We could go with red, which is really, really strong. Um, Let's see what else. You know what might work really nicely is Pear Pizzazz is the lighter counterpart to, um, let me just try that and let's see, um, where did my stamp go? Well, let's just see. This is when I have absolute mayhem in front of me. Let's see, where did my stamp go? Oh, it's right in front of me. Of course, that's where that usually things. Oh, Bumblebee, that's a good call, Susan. I like that, because there's just a little hint of Bumblebee down here. That might be a really good call, because we got a lot of green going here, and I think that was the key with the other card that we did. There was a lot of green, and so that very vanilla helped to, uh, helped to bring it together. Hey, Laura, I didn't know you were here. Hey, Mary, I'm glad you're here with us. Welcome, welcome. So let me get a little bit of Bumblebee. And see if that won't be just the ticket we are looking for for our little tag across here. 
Happy Christmas. Well, let's just try it. We're gonna try it in a couple of different colors and we're going to stamp them all in the Evening Evergreen, which is the color of the base of our card. And I think that, I think I'm gonna need a half inch strip this time. So let's go ahead and just cut a few and see what we like the best. And you know, this is kind of when you're designing your own Christmas cards. Um, you can just kind of play with it a little bit and then you're gonna come up with something that you really like and that's gonna be the one that you're gonna make a lot of. That is actually a little bit tight, so we're gonna do three eighths of an inch. So, or not three eighths, five eighths. So half plus an eighth. That's gonna give me a little bit bigger piece. So there's one, there's Bumblebee. Let's try it with, um, what is this, crumb cake. So we have it out. And then let's also try it with, um, that's going to be too, oh, we're going to try it with, this might be too short. Maybe it's okay. We'll try it with the, um, cherry cobbler. Let's see what we come up with. I think white is going to just blend into the background and we won't see it. So that's why I'm opting to not go with white. Okay, let's see what we come up Bumblebee or red with a white mat. Now there we go. We could use a white mat. So let's try. Let's see. The, let's try with the cherry cobbler first. There's our happy Christmas. It does need a mat. Here is our crumb cake. That looks pretty good. And this is our bumblebee. I think Bumblebee with a little red around it. Hmm. Or Bumblebee with, oh, too many choices. <laughs> There's too many choices. They definitely need a mat, whichever one we go with. And we could even do, you know, we might just need to do, uh, pull in the color of the card base, which is Evening Evergreen. And maybe that is the mat that we need to be using. We did a 5 8 inch strip. So let's try doing a 7 8 inch mat. Let's see how that is going to look. What if we do it like that? Happy Christmas. I like that. Or we could go like this. I like that, but it's pretty dark. That's pretty dark. That's too dark. I think if we're gonna go with this, it needs to like be on its own almost. And then it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle. And then there is the crumb cake, which looks really nice. And I think because we don't have any ribbon on this one, I think we definitely could bring in a little bit of our shiny ribbon. Let's see how this looks. This is the same ribbon we used on the other one. This time we're going to make a little bow, put at the end of our tag. And I do think that Happy Christmas with those stockings is super cute. So let's see, everybody's liking the yellow. Yellow and red maybe. We could go yellow like that. Um, let me see if I have another piece of that red here. As I cropped that little piece, I think if we're gonna do a red surround, a little red mat, I need another piece. Fine, go to my scrap bin and find a red, this is cherry cobbler. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> then we will have accomplished two really different looking cards with the same if we go red with bumblebee what do we think about that what do we think about that 
pretty cute. It's pretty cute. With a little bit of this, that's kind of coming together. My opinion, I will separate the two papers or add something between the papers. Oh, maybe like, is this what you mean? Do you mean to offset them? I think that's what you mean. And I, I like that idea. So that was, where's my punch? That was um, Simone that was weighing in. And I think, she, Simone has, does amazing work. She has a great eye. So let's see. I think we have a lot of votes for the yellow. And let's see about, um, let's just kind of eyeball this and see. I think what Simone meant was to do something like this, although now it's probably a little bit too wide. Um, let's see. That is a true mat there. So we could do that and put the ribbon over here. And then we can still add in a few of our red rhinestones. That's, look, that's looking pretty cute. Okay, I think everybody's happy with that. Happy Christmas. You know, that's actually a very British thing. Happy Christmas is the way that people are greeted in the UK. They do not really say Merry Christmas. They really say Happy Christmas. I think Merry Christmas has a little different connotation for them. I think if I recall, I think that Merry Christmas is a little bit more of like Merry making like party hearty kind of a, a greeting where when you just say Happy Christmas, it's yeah wishing you a very happy Christmas. I think on the... Um, Oh, now Mary likes the crumb cake with the green. That's a totally different look. Let's bring this back in just to kind of see. That's a, it's a more, much more subdued look. This brings out the brightness of the, um, of the um, stockings. So just two very, very different looks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick this down. And I think once we bring in the ribbon and a few red rhinestones, I think it's gonna all come together. And Mary, I'll show you the one that we did first because you were a little bit late to the party today. And I'll show you the other one that we did first that has a little bit more of the colors I think that you're looking at. And this was our first one that we did. And then here is the second one. It needs the bumblebee. Yeah, I think it kind of brightens everything. So I have a bow here somewhere. Let's put this bow down. And then I think a couple of those red rhinestones like what we did here. And then we are going to be there. Here's my, this has come together. Great design session with everybody working together and letting their voices be heard. We saw how to mix some different greens today, and we also, my main focus was learning how to use this border punch, the Holly border punch, which I think is just a really nice one. I've had border punches before that were a little bit challenging to use. I find this one super easy to use. Um, so I'm always a, a fan of easy, you know me. And this is just the ticket. So we go one, two, three. This was Jill's idea, the three. And then we'll do one more down here. And then this little card is super cute. It has a lot of detailing, you know? There's a lot of texture and detail here. There's a little bit of shine. And I think we're there. Tell me what you think. Tell me which one is your favorite. I'm going to pull this out from behind me. Tell me which is your favorite card from today. Let me make sure I'm, I've got them both in the uh, camera range. No, they're not both in camera range. Now let me just see if I can reposition a little bit here. Now let's see if that's 
tell me, tell me what you like the best. Do we like the uh, stockings or do we like the all green? Okay, Susan, you like the stockings. Yeah, they're really, really different cards. Both using the Holly Border Punch and the, both of these greetings, really pretty font, are from my um, featured stamp set for Cards with a Twist this month, which is the Happy Holidays. And my stamp set is somewhere. Here we go. I think, um, you know, I, I threw out there because you guys want me to work with the uh, dies from the Pretty Pillow Box. And I am working on that, but I will tell you that those Pretty Pillow Box dies have been mislaid in my stamp room. So they're somewhere, but I haven't found them yet. So I will work with those. And... Um, Oh, I would love for you to share something, Simone, because you have done some amazing things with that dog and cat paper. I would love for you to share it. So yes, please, please do. Okay, yeah, that is, yeah, I think I like this one better. This was this was totally like out of the box. We were not, I wasn't even going in this direction. And then we kind of, um, I found this scrap with the embossed piece and kind of went from there but I would send both these cards out. I like them, and um, hopefully you learned a little bit about how to use the Holly Border Punch and are considering adding it to your next order. I do have, um, if you have already received my newsletter that just went out, um, I do have a special this month with my host code, and that is that you can earn free celebration rewards with every $50 that you spend. And that is because I have a number of extra celebration rewards and I stocked some especially to be able to say thank you for orders in October. And that is again for every $50 you spend. Also a reminder that um, next, um, it's not next month, tomorrow, <laughs> sorry about that. Tomorrow is the um, clearance rack refresh and that will go live pretty early tomorrow morning. So um, those things are while supplies last. We never know what's gonna be on there. And uh, Valerie, thank you so much for being here. And I appreciate your, um, your support ever so much. And uh, you don't know, okay. You know what, Simone? I think you actually cannot send, I think you can't upload photos in the comments on a Facebook Live. If you'll send me the photo, if you'll, uh, you can send it to me in Messenger, and I will put your name on it, and I will tell people that that is your creation, and I would love to share it. Um, if it's the same thing I'm thinking that you had shared when we were playing bingo, I would love for people to see that. Um, and that is it for today. So I'm going to love you and leave you. We will be back here Thursday, and it will be simple and stepped-up stamping. We're going to be using Welcoming Woods again. Welcoming Woods is what we did last week, and I can't stop playing with it. I'm having so much fun with it. $17 stamp set that is so versatile. So that is it. Uh, don't forget that tomorrow is the big clearance rack refresh, and I did put my new um, host code up on the Facebook page here. And um, don't forget. Remember that uh, with every $50 you spend this month, I do have a number of celebration reward selections for you. So thank you again. I will see you Thursday. Don't forget to share my video. Take care and God bless.